I would say thank you so much to the Big Carrot for giving me this opportunity to talk about my favorite topic, which is the DIESS approach to hormone balancing and how to eliminate um, problems like PMS, sub one fat, and to achieve vibrant energy. Um, my name is Nasha, as Kelsey said, and this is my favorite topic. Part of it is because I dealt with it myself, and when I understand the other side of the science, it became really fascinating, and I just couldn't help to talk about it and tell everyone about this topic, right? So tonight, you're gonna learn what are hormone imbalances, what causes these problems, right? And then we are gonna talk about the apparent causes, right? So there are causes that you can see, and there are hidden causes that could be linked to problems like PMS, fatigue, and other women's health problems like raw iron, and stubborn belly fat, and acne. Right, so I'm a women's health expert, more like I work with a lot of women, but most of the advices just apply to both genders, so keep that in mind. And I will also talk about how a whole person, rather than a symptoms-focused approach, can help you eliminate these problems permanently. So hormonal issues would often feel like, um, you know, like, women, maybe younger, the premenopausal women will feel like the five days of the month towards their end of the cycle is kind of wasted. And it's almost like there's no place to go aside from taking birth control pills because um, like we just don't know. And it's almost as if we are slaves to our bodies. And here's some jokes, if those of you, if you are in fitness, you might know Dr. Krista Scott Dixon, who is a uh, <laughs> she's, a, she's a female like, fat loss expert uh, of their company called Physician Nutrition, which is like one of the best companies for training trainers to coach clients through nutrition. I will talk about that in a little bit. All right. So I'd like to lead with my very embarrassing story, because um, I'm a cancer researcher. I've been one for 12 years now, and it's just, you know, I thought I'd be speaking in front of people like this because I struggled a lot with my weight, and I was so shy. I struggled with a lot of skin problems and allergies, right? Um, when I went to school in undergrad, I was healthy on paper, but every time the pharmacy went on sale, I would walk in, and I would check out with, like, $400 worth of allergies, cold medication, painkillers, um, and, um, antihistamines and all of these things because I was sick all the time. I was feeling terrible all the time. But on paper, I was considered healthy because my blood work, according to the doctor, was healthy, right? And everything that I had could be covered up with the over-the-counter medications. But I, um, I thought Taco Bell was healthy. I'm going to admit that. I was a pre-med student. I thought Taco Bell was healthy. Um, I graduated 30 pounds heavier than when I started. And it was fun and dandy to live like that, right? Being a, a scientist, a biomedical scientist, until a couple of years ago. Uh, so I struggled quite a bit with my body until like a couple of years ago when I started bodybuilding. And uh, I find that weightlifting is extremely empowering when uh, I could go in, into the gym today and maybe I can lift 20 pounds and then the next day I can lift 25 pounds and I get stronger and stronger, right? So that's how I became a personal trainer because I found that it's very empowering for women and it's healthy for a lot of reasons. But at the same time, I was kind of heading my own body into a bikini body. Do you understand what I mean? Because a lot of people would think that once I'm thin or once I hit a certain body, then I would like the way I look. But what happens is that I remember taking this picture um, that day, and I look at myself in the mirror, and I was still not liking the way my thighs and the way my arms were looking, even though to everyone else, I probably look pretty ripped, right? So and at the same time, I was a personal trainer with these pictures all over social media because they give me clients, right? Uh, but I was a complete mess inside because my experiments in the lab were not working. And I was not eating enough food. I was working out two hours a day, like five, six days a week. So that was way too much. So I was so depressed and so tired that I couldn't get on with my day. And I had no period. So one day I woke up. I was completely covered in eczema. So it was like a perfect storm of 
stress, um, like taking a lot of stimulants and supplements and all of these things, and not eating enough food or eating a lot of the wrong foods. So I was covered in eczema in my arms, my hands, my back, my chest, my scalp, and there was like a big wake up call because it was so debilitating that I couldn't do anything. And I ended up having to take a semester off from graduate school to like figure out my life. Hey. So I would qualify for five different medications. I was already using 20 different jars of creams and 500 bucks worth of supplements just so I can get through the day. And if you go into the doctor's office as like a young woman and tell them that you have no cycle, no period, the first question they ask is, are you sexually active, right? I said, yes, I got a pregnancy test. So I went to three different doctor's offices and I got three different pregnancy tests because of that. So, and then I got that, I got no cycle. When they did the blood test, everything came back normal. And they're like, well, there's nothing we can do for you unless you want to take a birth control pill. Right? And they kind of like threatened me to take birth control pills in order to regulate my period. Um, so to backtrack, like as a scientist, when I look at my lab animals, right? so what I study is like I study cancer genes. So if something is wrong with my animals, I look into what's going on, right? Why do they have these problems? What exactly is causing it? How does that work? But when I look at the way my body was going wrong, right, and the way I was treating it, it's like something's wrong with my body. I don't know why, but the solution is to take the medication so that the symptoms would go away, right? It just kind of doesn't make sense. It's not scientific to me. So I wanted to understand what was going on in my body um, scientifically and see if I can reverse that because biologists would always believe that if something is wrong, like with my um, research animal or with my body, then I know that my body is correct and it's doing the best to survive, right? So I have the option between getting on all these medications and just living my life versus getting healthy. And it involved a lot of taking responsibility to get healthy because it involved dealing with life, with the stresses that I already have, and reversing the, the bad habits of exercising too much, not sleeping enough, not eating the right foods, and all of these things. So once I figured that out, right, within a few months, I got my cycles back. I just had to gain some body fat and eat enough food to turn my hormone systems back on. And also had to figure out the leaky gut to deal with, because like it's connected to, yeah? Were you a nutritionist at that time? Um, I was in holistic nutrition school at the time. In the school? Okay. In the, in, at the time, yeah, yeah. So for part of the, the issue that... So you were able to relate it to your lifestyle, your food and everything? Yeah. So a lot of their anxiety, depression and fatigue was related to the leaky gut. And also the leaky gut caused the eczema. Right? So when I fixed the gut, then the eczema cleared up really quickly. How yeah. did you fix the leaky gut? Um, there's a lot of different... Um, issues that contribute to it, right? So for me, I was eating the wrong foods, right? So if someone has a leaky gut, they will have food sensitivities, right? So if I was eating the wrong foods, I had to figure out what it is um, by going on an elimination diet and then reintroducing so I know which are the items that I was reacting to. And for some other people, they could be having some kind of infection that caused the, the leaky gut. Yeah. Did you have allergies, food allergies at that time? Yeah. Yeah, I always had some allergies on and off, but it was just the perfect storm that like made it really terrible. When I figured this out, like it was surprising because all that I knew up until that point was antihistamines, steroid creams, painkillers, and antidepressants, right? So as someone who had been very trusting of conventional medicine, it was surprising to know that there's actually science behind things like leaky gut, right? Behind hormone and hormone imbalances, the cortisol levels, with their skin, mental health, and how everything is all connected. Between all of them, so I kind of went on a quest to understand the, how, how these chronic health issues arise. Like, I got a biology degree from Penn. And it's formed a good basis for understanding all of this. So when I started as a personal trainer, um, so those of you who are personal trainers or holistic nutritionists, or nutritionists will understand that people tend to fall off the wagon um, when they're, like, they're given the plans that work for them. But studies show that 90% of people fall off the wagon. So Precision Nutrition is one of the companies that research about sharing psychology so that we can help all the clients and not just 10% of the clients that stay on the wagon because I don't think that works for say if I can't coach all the clients. Right? 
I studied natural nutrition as well because I was fascinated by how um, changing from processed foods to organic whole natural foods can be healing to the body. But I also learned to my disappointment that food alone was not completely um, the complete solution. Because right? I would see a lot of people uh, maybe talk to a lot of people on the internet that says that I went on this diet, I eliminated this, I eliminated that, and then I went pay a little harder, and then I cut carbs, and I cut fat, but <laughs> the problems are not resolving. So FDN is my sacred weapon because it allows me to help the clients who have been to multiple doctors and multiple specialists to not find the answers or not even diagnosis because instead of looking at the diagnosis, we look at the root causes and the malfunctions. Right. Superhuman Coach is another certification by Ben Greenfield that allows me to use, um, teaches me to use technology to help us get healthier. So like their measurements of stress, for example, that can be a little easily done. So if someone wants to measure stress, then you can measure it. Um, and this is especially the case for the more athletic population. And of course, it's PubMed that I can use to evaluate anything that evidence-based, if I'm so curious about it, because I've been a biomedical researcher for a while, and I understand the, the process. Would you think it's the plane's fault that the plane crashes? It's usually human errors, right? It's the way we drive the planes, and it's the way we maintain the plane, and maybe you drive into the wrong weather. So it's often the outside environment because our bodies are not made for us to suffer, right? So the basis is that if we're living our life the right way, then our hormonal health will be great, and we are not going to suffer so much. Like things like menopause is going to happen, but it is going, it's not going to be super, super terrible. So like I said, uh, what I learned from being a biomedical researcher is that the human body has the brain and the body, right? And hormones is one of the things that travel in the blood, right? And also the nutrients is the, one of the means that is communicated in the body. So usually when we have 100% function, or in scientific term, is homeostasis, then you have a state of ease. So if that's 100% function, would you have hormone imbalances? No. Yeah, so you, you won't have any symptoms and all your hormones will be balanced, right? So what happens is when there's malfunction and then there's a state of dis-ease and symptoms are the last thing to occur, right? But you gotta remember symptoms are the last thing to occur because the malfunctions could be there for decades before someone starts to realize the symptoms. But when people start to get help, like they go to see the doctors, Right? Or maybe even talking to a clerk at the supplement store, maybe they come to see me. They're looking to get the symptoms removed. So it could be talking about, oh, my acne is terrible, or my PMS is terrible, or someone's talking about belly fat, and all of these things. Right? What happens if you only remove the symptoms? Then you still have the malfunctions and the state of disease. Right? So the symptoms, the same symptoms can come back, or this can manifest in a different form. So that's why a lot of people kind of fall into this downward spiral, and before you know it, they're taking 20 different medications, and some of the medications could be to control the side effects of another medication. And for some reason, they never talk to about diet and lifestyle, and that's kind of awful. And that's one of the reasons healthcare is so expensive in the States. And this could be one of the reasons why 95% of people lose weight and then they will keep it off, right? Because that's a symptom of the underlying malfunctions. Like, you gotta remember that symptoms are the tips of the iceberg and malfunctions are underneath. So, now let's look at what underlying um, hormone imbalances you might have, right? So there's a few different body fat patterns Right, the, the, body, the body fat in the thighs is more specific to estrogen. So most women will have some fat in the thighs and that's normal and healthy. But if it's too much, that could be a sign that someone has too much estrogen level, right? And it can contribute to problems like PMS and acne and other forms of estrogen dominant symptoms. And it can contribute to cancer risk. Another issue is cortisol. So if someone has fat in the lower belly, so that's a sign that they could have chronic stress or just somehow misregulation of cortisol, right? Thyroid issues, 
if someone is gaining fat all over without eating more foods per se, that could mean that their metabolism is downregulating. And the last one, for men who look kind of pregnant without the babies, um, so it's, it's called a beer belly, right? There's some issue with the, the liver. So the next question is, what causes the hormone imbalances, right? Um, so to say that it's probably stress, but some of you may be like, I have hormonal problems, but I don't have stress. Right? But stress is not just the mental, emotional stress or anxiety on its own. There are other forms of stress, like physical stress, right? biomechanical stress, and biochemical and physiological stress. And the last category is kind of my specialty. So first is, um, there are two different categories that I mentioned before, which are the apparent stressors, or like the things that draw your body out of homeostasis that you can see. And the latter category is that the hidden stressors that you can't see. Right? So I'm going to touch on the ones that you can see first, and then we can talk about the hidden stressors, which you may not even have heard of. So uh, mental emotional stress, most of us have some degree of it because of like what? Kids, marriage, uh, finances, <laughs> traffic, jobs, etc. Right? But in fact, studies show that it's actually the, perfect, uh, the perception of stress that impact your physiological responses that impacts how that cues your hormones. Right? So for people who take in the stress and they internalize it and then they will know how to mitigate that, that's when it's really bad for the hormones. Right? So, so that's one thing, and um, a lot of times when people develop a chronic health issue, like relatively immediately, it's because of a major stressor in their life. So that needs to be dealt with and investigated as well for anyone who wants to balance their hormones. Uh, another one is the mechanical and physical stress. So a lot of us have sedentary jobs, right, which can be bad for our, our health. Uh, so as a personal trainer, like, I'm mindful of like, what's the best posture. And everywhere I look, I see people um, with really bad posture, either like slouch over and using the phone like this, right, which can be a stress to the body, even though we're not experiencing pain per se. Like maybe if you're not experiencing pain, it doesn't mean that there's no malfunctions in that department. So part of a good hormone balancing program will involve balancing out the mechanical and physical stress, be it through like exercise, um, through more movements, and through things like chiropractic and physiotherapy. And I do believe that a lot of people can benefit from physiotherapy even preventatively before they develop a pain or some kind of diagnosis. Um, so the last one, which is the most fun, is the biochemical and physio physiological stress. Right? What do you think is wrong with this picture? Too many things at the same time. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. First of all, I think it's extremely acrobatic if a woman can put mascara on with one hand, like let alone holding a baby with another hand, right? But yes, the issue is 7:30 in the morning. She's preparing to leave the house. Or she took a shower did her hair, put some perfume on, did her makeup, and all these things. She has been exposed to 515 different chemicals. Right? Things like paraben, phthalates, perfume, um, petroleum, and antibacterial chemicals. These things are hormone disruptors. Right? Maybe one of them is fine, but 500 of them at the same time, every single day for your entire life. Right? That's why pretty much all the women are dealing with some forms of hormonal issues, because we are dealing with a lot of in environmental toxins. And even worse, when she gives birth to this baby, there's more than 200 different chemicals, like one of these that she was exposed to in the baby, like in his cord blood, which is kind of scary. Right? So one of the things that's extremely important for hormone balancing is to pick the, the products that are free of these chemicals, right? the hormone disrupting chemicals like parabens, phthalates, uh, triclosan, um, all of these things. So if you're curious about it, you can go to ewg.org and read about these hormone disrupting chemicals. I, I do believe the, the Big Carrot has a lot of great um, toxin-free products and cosmetics that you can check out as well. Moving on. So another biochemical and physiological stress is the wrong that advice that has been given to us for the past decades, right? Um, so things like the food pyramid, so fortunately the food pyramid has kind of been debunked. 
um, it's kind of made into my plate in the States, right? Um, and the reason it's like this is because the food industry has a lot of say in the, the diet recommendations, but the diet recommendations that's given like this doesn't mean that it's necessarily healthy, right? Especially when it's given to everyone regardless of their, their health status and their activity levels. So the kind of wrong diet advice with a lot of whole grains, right, and less fruits and vegetables and um, conventional meats, conventional dairy, can, get, can, can cause a lot of problems. So one of the things is that a higher carb diet like this for people who are not very active can cause blood sugar problems, right, which is a major stress to the body. So if a woman has blood sugar issues, you can say goodbye to your hormone balance as well. So it's extremely important to address this for everyone. Another reason is that things like gluten and a lot of grains and a lot of dairy could be inflammatory, right? There's a lot of potential for food sensitivities, but um, whether someone should avoid anything or not is an individual issue. And the last thing is that a lot of people eating their conventional foods and produce and processed foods are gonna have nutrient deficiencies that can slow down metabolism, right? They can slow down the detoxification process and it can slow down hormone production. So these things can lead to hormone imbalances. So what I usually recommend is whole foods, mostly plant. Um, but I do believe that meat, uh, good quality meat, like grass-fed, pasture-raised meats have a place in the human diet. Right? So nutrient-dense meats, especially organ meats, um, are my favorites. So they are the most nutrient-dense ones. And fats, especially animal fats, like grass-fed lard and butter. And good carbohydrates that um, the amount should be depending on the person and the activity levels, obviously. So in the, yeah, oh, sorry. In the paleo world, right, a lot of us will go on a lower carb diet and we find a lot of good benefits for our health. But I'm kind of on the middle ground in terms of like how much carb we should eat, especially <coughs> for women. And I'm more of an advocate of the cellular carbs or um, to make it simpler, it's like the kind of carbs that when you look at them, you recognize the original form of it, right? So you look at the carrot and you can tell it's a carrot Right? You look at beans, and you can tell it's beans. Uh, but if you look at bread, you can't tell the original form of the bread. Right? So that's just a different way of like looking at the, the good kind of carbs versus the bad kind of carbs. Right? Another apparent stressor is sleep, because diet alone is not the issue. Like I said before, food alone is not going to fix all the problems. Right? So this is what happens to the hormones when someone is not sleeping well or just after a night of poor sleep, the insulin sensitivity goes down, like the cortisol levels goes up, so the stress hormone goes up. Right? The hunger hormone goes, goes up and the satiety hormone goes down. So that's like a perfect recipe for body fat gain, right? And the wrong kind of body fat gain, she's like in the belly. And the growth hormone goes significantly down. And for men, it's, they said that your testosterone goes down by 25%, which is like the equivalent of decades of aging just by not sleeping well for a night. Right? Unfortunately, it has become not cool and not normal to sleep well before midnight. So one of the best tricks for addressing hormone imbalances is that you should sleep by like 10 o'clock. Okay. Um, it depends on the person. <laughs> it depends on the person. So some people need like seven hours, some people need eight hours. Yeah, but I would say like by like six is a, is a good time. Yeah. It depends on the person, but six is a good number. Six. Six in the morning. No, eight hours. So he then is an acronym. The first H is hormones. All right, so hormones can be out of bounds. And there's a few different ways that someone can get hormone imbalances is usually because of imbalances in the other five systems. So the IDDEN is coming in the next couple of slides. So one of the hormone imbalances is called estrogen dominance. Right? It's too much estrogen relative to progesterone, 
So there's a few different causes to this, but estrogen dominance can lead to thyroid problems, right? Can lead to PMS, can lead to any form of problems with the cycle. So if someone has migraines, anxiety, or insomnia later in the cycle, that can contribute, uh, that can be caused by estrogen dominance and too little progesterone, right? Things like acne and female pattern weight gain. And for men, estrogen dominance could be caused by um, low testosterone, or sometimes it's kind of like a chicken and egg issue, right? because belly fat in men will make estrogen, and that can reduce the availability of the testosterone. Okay, so um, I can sometimes tell if the man has like too much estrogen from a distance, just from their the body fat pattern. Like if they have too much body fat in the bottom, and if they have what is called moops or man boobs. Right, which is not a great thing, because if men has too much estrogen, that's a contributor to prostate cancer as right, a cancerous. For women, it's a contributor to breast cancer, uterine cancer, and cervical cancer. So you want to manage those. Um, one of the causes of estrogen dominance is because as we age, right, our hormones all go down. But for women, progesterone goes down a lot faster than estrogen. And also, if you're stressed out because our bodies make cortisol from progesterone, so if you're stressed out and your body wants to make more cortisol, then it makes progesterone, then you are gonna get worse estrogen dominance. Okay? So one of the keys is to manage the stress that you are exposed to. Another common hormone imbalance is adrenal fatigue. So how many of you have heard of adrenal fatigue? Yeah, how many of you have been diagnosed with adrenal fatigue? Yeah, it's a, it's a million dollar like, buzzword. One of the reasons is because everyone has it and they associate with some other health issues or like some symptoms that they're feeling, which makes sense because like 90% of the health issues that we are dealing with, especially like, the chronic ones, are associated with stress in one way or the other. But Adrenal fatigue is kind of like a misnomer because it involves a lot more than just your adrenal. Right? It's the miscommunication between the brain, the, pituitary, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the adrenals. But this system also communicates with your, your ovaries and your thyroid. Right? So when someone is stressed out and they tax the hormone system, that pretty much affects all the hormones. Okay? So how how does it happen? How does someone hack the system out? Right, so there are the apparent stressors, but there can also be inflammation that you can't see, right? Sometimes you feel like the headache and the anxiety or like the aches and pain are normal, but they're not normal because there's some sorts of inflammation going on in the body. Um, maybe someone has a nutrient deficiency and they're not aware of, and that can also contribute to the adrenal fatigue problems as well, right? The gut bacteria is a contributor to hormone balance. And if someone has totally off gut bacteria, that can cause similar issues to adrenal fatigue, right? Uh, detoxification problems can also contribute to adrenal fatigue as well as mitochondria function. So that's why I like to look at, um, another thing is the immune system. So if you have inflammation of any sort, could be allergies, autoimmune issues, frequent colds, is that's a sign that you might have an issue with the immune system. So for example, PMS, right? PMS involves pain and cramps, right? So pain is a symptom of inflammation. So if someone has PMS pain, so that's a sign that perhaps there's something wrong with the immune system rather than just um, trying to address the pain right there. Um, the digestion is another system that is extremely important to, to be looked at, right? Because in functional medicine, we know that the gut is the center of everything because that's where our gut bacteria are and studies are coming out to tell us that it's doing a lot of things with our hormones and with our stress response system. Like if um, you're stressed out, there's a study that looks at the students studying for exams and another group of students and they found that the bacteria knows if the students are stressed out, right? So. If you want to have good gut bacteria, you need to manage your stress level as well, and you need to eat the right food, so like lots of plant materials, um, for example. So it's a lot more important than just taking probiotics, because when I talk about the digestive system and the gut bacteria, a lot of people will be like, I take probiotics, right? But the probiotics 
is actually the drop in the bucket comparing to whatever you are having in your, in your gut. Right, so that's one thing. Another thing is that there could be a lot of other issues with the digestive system, especially for people who are stressed out and their immune system is not working correctly. So some people will have yeast overgrowth. Some people could be catching uh, parasites. Right? And you can catch parasites from um, even being in a country like Canada as well. It's possible to get parasites from eating a salad if your immune system is not strong enough to eliminate these things. So over the long time, if someone has chronic low-grade infection, that can contribute to the stress level because it's a stress to the body and it can be inflammatory. Another system is the detoxification, right? it's the liver. So the liver works to eliminate the excess hormones, like if woman you have estrogen and your liver will eliminate the excess estrogen, right? And also if you apply parabens and perfume to your skin, that's also the liver's job to eliminate these things. Also um, the thyroid hormones, right? So the thyroid gland makes the thyroid hormone, which is inactive, and it's converted into its active form in the liver and in the gut. Like by the liver, the gut cell and the gut bacteria. So if someone is feeling fatigued or they feel like they're gaining weight for no reason, or feeling cold, when they go to the doctor and they, the doctor tests for a few of the hormones that are not the active form, then they say like, oh, you've got normal labs, right? You have normal thyroid, it's not the thyroid issue. And of course, it's not the thyroid issues, but they can be having a thyroid problems because of the gut issues and the liver problems. If you understand what I mean. So that's how things are connected right there. Um, energy production system, like the mitochondria, is one of the small um, organs, organelles in the cell that produce energy. So one of its main job is to burn fat. All right, so if someone is not burning fat well, so there are tests that I can run to look at this. Someone is not burning fat well, there could be a reason they're gaining fat, yet they are tired all the time. And the mitochondria's job is also to make steroid hormones like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. So when someone tests and they come out super low in hormones, this could be a problem as well. That uh, we look at the mitochondria and see whether the mitochondria is not functioning correctly. And the last point, the nervous system is the captain of all the body systems. Right? So if the brain is not sensing things correctly, that could contribute to hormone imbalances. So, so I gave you like an overview of the hidden, all the different hidden stressors, right? One of, so the key to resolve their hormone imbalances is not just to, you know, like the original uh, way to look at it, endocrinologists would like run your labs, I look at your thyroid, look at your different sex hormones, your FSH, RS, and all these things. And the way they usually fix is like, oh, this is low, let's add more. Right? Or oh, this is high, let's see how you can make it lower, or like, why is it high? So they, they fix the lab, right? But a different way that I look at it is like, you ask like, why is this high or why is the thing low, right? So it could be that the way that your body is trying to fix something that are the underlying malfunctions. And when you look at the real causes and you handle that instead, then the hormone imbalances will fix themselves and your symptoms will fix themselves. So the key is to remove the, the blocking factors, right? To look at the the apparent stressors, I usually tell my clients, like the apparent stressors are their responsibilities. What I help them with is I identify the hidden stressors, look at the corners that have not been looked at before, and handle them accordingly. Right? So once we remove the blocking factors, then the body should heal itself. Right? And we do that using the DRSS approach, which is eating the right diet, right? getting enough rest, so both in terms of like mental relaxation and sleeping. Uh, getting enough exercise, so the right forms of movement, it depends on the person. So some people need a lot of exercise. Uh, some people need to get more gentle exercise. Stress reduction, extremely important for both the appellant stressors and the hidden stressors, and that's the supplementation. So there's a few different roles for supplements, right? Because these days, a lot of people are nutrient deficient, and the general diet that we have like in this day and age, it's not enough to give us all the nutrients. So some people will need to supplement that in order to like stay nutrient sufficient. 
but there are also other roles of supplements, right? So if you find, like for example, some infections in the gut, then you can use herbs or some, in some cases, maybe medications to kill those things. And we can use supplements to support the immune system and support the body's recovery. So we use it to remove and to repair the issues. Okay, so this is an overview. And then next I'm gonna go into a case study. So this is one of my previous personal training client of mine. So she came to me, she wanted to like a, like great on the beach basically. So I taught her to lift weights and you can see this by this graph, so you can look the, the red line at, at the top is the, the body weight. And so you can see that she gained a little bit of weight, she gained like a pound. But her body fat, this yellow line is going down. And her lean body mass, which is like her bones and muscles are going up. So she was getting great results even though her body weight was not, was not changing a lot. But there was one thing that was bothering her that she was getting this one push in the bottom of her stomach that just wouldn't go away, even though she had already lost 10% body fat. Right? So um, she also had other symptoms. Like, do you, so you might know some people who like, they feel like their stomach feels like a brick if they eat red meat. It's just because they're not digesting it at all. And she's two different people before and after ovulation because I interacted with her a lot, so I know that. Just after ovulation, she was a completely different person. She craved a lot of carbs, so carb cravings is uh, potentially an issue, about, um, an issue about estrogen, low serotonin. She's bloated a lot, and she obviously ha she had to push, this just wouldn't go away, even though she lost a lot of body fat, right? So eventually, when I was able to convince her to investigate this issue. So I ran some lab tests. Right, so just to clarify, so I, I, I'm a holistic nutritionist, right? And I don't do what the doctors do, which is diagnose and treat. But there are different lab tests. So like these days, that's a lot of state-of-the-art lab tests that you can look at, say, your mitochondrial function, or see perhaps your, your brain function, to see how well these things are working. And maybe you can look at your hormones, in your urine and your saliva, for example. So those are the tests that maybe won't diagnose anything most of the times, but it can, it can show like a lot of the times when people go to the doctors, they get the hormone measure in the blood and everything comes back normal. But when they run these tests, it shows very clearly that there's some imbalances going on, even though it's not bad enough to, to call one disease or another. So those are lab tests that I mainly run. And also there's another category of tests that I run, like I run tests on people's poop um, and maybe like the other day exhale to see if there could be infections. So these are overlapping with the doctors and for these I have, uh, I have permission to use a doctor's license to run these tests. Right, so we ran a couple of tests on these clients and I found that she has S. pylori. So S. pylori is a spiral bacteria, so like it looks like a spiral and it's associated with stomach ulcer and stomach cancer, if you heard of it. So um, when someone goes to the doctor and they have like burning stomach and have stomach ulcer, uh, then they often are tested with S. pylori, but a lot of people who have S. pylori don't have stomach ulcer, right? but that they can also manifest in other forms of health problems. So it could be PMS, it could be bloating, it could be that she's not digesting things well, like, like her stomach feels like a brick when she eats any red meat at all. That's because this bacteria is very good at lowering stomach acid. And stomach acid is extremely important. It's a very important part of your digestive system because what it does is that it kills the germs, right? All the foods that you eat, the water that you, you drink will have bacteria and maybe yeast, maybe viruses in them. But when you eat and drink them, it's completely normal but the stomach acid will kill those things. So that's one of the functions of the stomach acid. And another thing that it does is that it tells the rest of their digestive system to work correctly, to move correctly, right? So if someone has no stomach acid, the odds of them getting other infections in their digestive system is very, very high. And the odds that their gut bacteria will go out of balance is very, very high. So the odds of their hormonal system can be thrown off is also very, very high, which is why we look at these problems. So this gap, so when she has S. pylori, 
right? And she's getting bloated. Another issue is called small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So if you take in probiotics, right? So most of you know that probiotics is good for you. But the thing is that the probiotics that you take should go into your large intestine, right? But if your small intestine is not moving correctly, then this bacteria can go and say, I'm going to make a home in the small intestine. And this is linked to a lot of health problems. So it's an active area of research to understand this problem that's called small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Right? So it goes and it stays in the small intestine. It can contribute to bloating, constipation, diarrhea, like IBS in general. So let's say that 80% of people who have IBS will have SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth. Right, and it can contribute to nutrient deficiency. So for people who can never increase their like iron level, B12 level, it's often linked to small intestine bacterial overgrowth, or it can be other kinds of infections as well. Right, so for her, because she has bloating, and her digestive system was not working well, so I tested this, and found that she was positive. Yeah, and maybe like 80% of fibromyalgia patients and a lot of like weird chronic health issues is also linked to SIBO as well. So it's just like one of these very interesting things to, to look into. Sorry, what was that last yeah. Sorry, SIBO is an acronym for small intestine bacterial overgrowth. So um, the, the test for this is to um, drink some kind of sugar. So like there's like glucose and lactulose sugar and lactulose is a prescription. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for thank you for telling me that. So the test for the small intestine bacterial overgrowth is to drink the solution that contains these sugars because the sugars will feed this bacteria, and this bacteria will make gases, either hydrogen gas or methane gas. So the tester will like drink it and then they blow into a bath after um, drinking it. So it'll be like a syrup zero minutes to like 15 minutes, half an hour to two hours, three hours. And then they ship off this back up air that they blow to a lab. And then the lab measures the amount of gas in this back and see how much it is. So if it passes to a certain level, like this client, that means that she has um, the bacterial overgrowth. Makes sense? So she had it. Um, it has that it's, it's positive. So we use some, uh, some people will use antibiotics to treat them because the bacteria that are going in the wrong place. We found these things, right? And it's more than just killing them off because the reason that someone has the S. pylori and has the SIBO is because their immune system was not working and the gut was not moving correctly, right? So it's also involving fixing the immune system. It's involving um, de-stressing and move, making sure that the gut moves correctly before we move on to other things. So we use, of course, the DRESS approach and because S. pylori is contagious, right, then you also have to test the entire family just to make sure that she doesn't catch it back from other family members. But she could also do that with her, her doctor. She finally lost her push and she's getting flat stomach, right? And she eventually, a few months, she normalized things out. She became the same person throughout her cycle. So she doesn't get PMS, she doesn't get acne anymore. And she can eat meats with no problem after like, working up the stomach acid level, but it had to be done correctly. Okay. So go to think about your why, because um, some of us want to balance your hormones because you want to feel more attractive to your partners, right? Some of us want to reclaim that five days of the month and finally feel good about your skin. You might want to feel better um, about their the menopause, we want to fix the fatigue and the, the body fat gain. And some of us may have a recent health scare. Or some of us may just be sick and tired of being sick and tired and not finding the answer. And you know, I love giving these talks because I get to connect with people who not only have had enough with their hormonal issues, but they're also 100% ready to take action. And you absolutely do take actions. But if, I mean, if the symptoms work, then there, there wouldn't be a hundred ways of doing it, right? And there, there wouldn't be like a million different help blocks talking about hormonal issues because it's really not the information that's the real solution. The real solution is the doing and the understanding the individual root causes. So what I do with my clients is that usually more effective approach to resolving chronic health problems, to running the lab tests, 
um, according to like the person's history and presentation and fixing the underlying root causes, right? But the key is not about doing everything because for every case, it's 20% of the effort that can lead to 80% of the results. The Pareto's principle applies to health. So who here wants to do 20% of the work to get 80% of their improvements? Yeah. So hopefully the goal here is to, to get 100% healthy, right? The great news is you can do 20% of the work to get 80% of the results. The bad news is that if you are not aware of the 20% of the work and you're not doing it, you could also be missing 80% of the results. Right? So that's why a lot of people are left spinning their wheels and they just don't know what's going on because they're going to different doctors and trying so many different things and they're not seeing the results. That could just be the blind spot there. So I'm going to take questions. And